Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry. We've recently been exploring the render modes with Blazor Movie. Today, we're going to talk about Signal R. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series detailing the other render modes, links to those will be in the description below. But in this video, we're primarily going to focus on what makes the Signal R render mode special when you compare it to SSR and the other available modes. So let's take a look. If I refresh the page here, you can see that it loads the partial of the page and then it has, hey, look at this, some placeholder content and then finally it loads it in, okay? So there is something going on here. It's a little bit different than SSR in that everything is connected through a signal R connection back to our server, right? So let's look at the code and how this works. So if I go over here and look at my signal R component here, You'll notice here this code, if you saw the previous video, is exactly like the server-side render code, with the exception here, it has a different endpoint for this one, and it has an attribute called render mode server. Now I call it signal R because I think that render mode server and server-side rendering can be a little bit confusing, okay? So just know that render mode server is gonna create a signal R connection between our client the web browser and our server okay so notice here in here the code is kind of the same here we have an initialize here where we're going to our endpoint and we're pulling back a movie response okay and this movie response is basically um, the, the information we get from the movie database API all right and so, and that will render a bunch of cards here. Notice here too, it checks to see if it's null. If it's not null or if it is null, it's just gonna render um, eight blank movie cards. And I showed this in the previous video, um, but I'll go over there real quickly and show it to you here. If it's null here, if it's not null, it shows the card with information. If it is null, it's gonna show the, the HTML with the placeholder concept or the placeholder um, bootstrap card in here. Okay. And so these placeholder classes are bootstrap styles that give it a little flash so the user knows something's happening. All right. So let's look how that works and we'll refresh it. Refresh the page here. And when it refreshes, you'll see that it loads the bootstrap styles and then it loads in the cards. Okay. So notice I didn't have to do anything to get these real cards to show up to make sure that the UI changes or anything like that. And this is the, kind of the magic of Blazor. So let's look at how that works. So once I call, I'm going to go over here back to my signal R component here. Once I call my endpoint here, this is going to return an object called movie response. And movie response is going to have the eight movies that we're looking for. Okay. The popular movies from there. And if this is null, it's already loaded in eight blank cards. But once this object changes, the underlying object changes, this code will automatically re-execute and then it'll start loading in the movies that it has because the endpoint has finished, okay? So when we have a long running process, this will work. Now this works a lot like the streaming mode we showed in the previous video. In other words, that we can show something while something else is loading, but the major difference here is the lack or the ability for us not to use JavaScript for interactivity because we have a direct connection to the DOM through the server. So the server not only returns the page to us, it also keeps up with the current state of the DOM on the server and we have an interactive event, we send that event over to the server and it can tell us what changes I need to make and it only sends the deltas or the changes and then kind of inserts that or overlays it into the DOM itself, all right? So let's see how that works when we look at our modal, okay? So you can notice here, I've got a movie card here and when I get an on button click event, I'm gonna call this method called get movie details and this is executed over here on C sharp. Now notice that this C sharp function here is going to run on the server. 
and then it's going to call movie details and bring back a movie details object, all right? And that's all it's going to do. And it's going to say, hey, the status has or the state has changed. Now, this is necessary because some awaited functions won't allow a component to detect. And if you have that problem, we call state has changed, and that'll make our components detect that they've changed. And in this case, it'll change our modal out, okay? So we have a modal here that has movie details in it, okay? This changes every time a button is clicked on here. So let's look at the movie card. And um, we can go to the top here and it can say, hey, is it used for JS? No, okay, down here is what we're interested in. And so we can have a button here which is showing us the modal that we need to hit. And then we have this C-sharp function here that allows us to create an on-click event that runs asynchronously and then um, we can tell it what button to it or what function to evoke in its parent. So on button click invoke async and then we pass it in the ID of the current movie, all right? And this right here is where we call this an event callback as a parameter that calls back into its parent to invoke a function, okay? So this is where we're calling an event callback and this is where it's called. So it passes values out of the component into its parent. And that is a very powerful thing. Not only can we pass values into a component, we can pass them back out, okay? With these events, right? So if we go back into our movie, signal R here, we've got this on button click event that's being passed back out of our component. And we say, oh, just run this server side function here. And it does. And then it calls an endpoint and then it changes movie details. What else is happening is the button click itself is happening at the same time that this is happening. So we've got a parameter coming back out. We're running a server side function, but we're also running a button click. All right. So let's go back into our movie card. And notice here we have this button that has a, a, a BS target, and this is called for bootstrap, and it tells it to pop a modal, okay? Where's the modal? It's also on the parent, okay? And we give it an ID of that modal, okay? And that means it'll find it on the page. So if we go back to our signal R here, you can see here we're just loading in the modal and then we're also passing in the modal whatever the current value is of movie details okay so if we look at movie modal we can see here that uh, movie modal is expecting a parameter here coming in and it's got movie details now initially this may be null because no one's clicked a button yet and that's okay this will render with null values and nothing happens because no one tried to pop the modal. But as soon as it's clicked, the button click renders. It finds the um, the button click finds this ID here. Bootstrap finds this ID, displays the modal. At the same time, movie details has also been changed, and we can now load in our movie details from the object it has. And so we just bind it up here, and these are all bound by what's being passed into it. Now notice here that I haven't written any JavaScript to do it. If you looked at the SSR, I had to write a lot of JavaScript to bind values to the individual elements on the modal. Here, I don't have to do that. All I have to do is reference the object that's being passed in and the property on that object that I want to display, okay? So I've got an object coming in, movie details, all right? If we look at movie details here, um, we have a lot of thing backdrop budget genres homepage um, popularity the overview the title the poster path we're using these the production companies we're using the release date the revenue the runtime so there's a lot of properties in here that we can utilize to display information about the selected movie okay now this is where it gets magic so when you look at this and I click on the first one here you can notice here it's going to load as soon as it's done, it binds to the UI. Now, I don't have a modal per movie here. There's no magic going on. It's just saying, oh, that movie details object changed. Therefore, I can now display those values. Okay. 
So if I do it again, I'll pick Heart and Stone. You can see here it's loading, calls out the API, and it changes the picture, changes the synopsis, the title. All of these things are now specific to this movie. One more time, it loads, and now a new movie is coming in. Now notice here that, if you can pay attention here, is that the modal's already popped here. Bootstrap did its work, and then that movie details changed, and that caused our component to rebind to display the information we have. And that is why people are really excited about Blazor, because normally I have to do a lot of JavaScript to do this. Now I don't. I can write some very clean components um, from a separate concern. As long as you pass in the, the, the property that I'm looking for, or the object I'm looking for, I can write my UI and it'll always be flawless. I don't have to worry about misnaming an element or misnaming an ID or it changing. As long as I have my component wired up correctly, it'll just work. And we think that is a very powerful feature inside of Blazor and it's something that people are going to adopt. So we're real excited about Blazor.net 8. I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.